Can you find all the secrets hidden in Moore's apartment? I'm Shellen Cotton, here at The Gamer to show you a walkthrough of the Moore's apartment scene with Galeb in Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song. You won't get very far in Moore's apartment without a key to access all the locked doors. To find this, you'll need to speak to the caretaker, Ethan Adams. Adams is found in the living room directly across from the main entrance hall. To get anything useful out of him, you'll need to use your presence first to calm him down. After that, you can question Adams about the events of that night, but the most important thing you can get from him is the magnetic pass to access the parking garage. Once you've got the keys to the castle, your next priority should be to find all the safe zones in this scene. Getting through this area will require a lot of vampiric power. And if you don't want to go on a killing spree, you'll need to keep your hunger low. The first safe zone can be found to the left as you come from the main entrance, behind a door across from the indoor jungle. The second safe zone is on the next floor, in Moore's office. Continue past the room with the ghoul, Donna Lehane. To the right, as you enter the office, there's another little room filled with files. The door in here is locked, and you could lockpick it, but you can also find the key in the right-hand drawer of Moore's desk. This safe zone is where you'll also find the confidential file on Siaka. The last safe zone is going to be in the parking garage. You can access the garage from the kitchen with the magnetic pass. Enter this door on the right, continue through the pantry, and down this hall, there's an elevator. Past the room with the garbage disposal, you can enter a staff room that's safe to feed in. All right, now let's backtrack a little bit. If you've already been in Moore's office, you might have found the button beneath his desk where you found the archive key. This button reveals a hidden safe in the wall. You can find the code to this in the daughter's bedroom. On the wall, there's a photo of her on her birthday. Between the blood smeared on the keypad and a little deductive reasoning, you should be able to figure out that her birth date is 040911. Inside the safe are documents about Richard Dunham. Next, head to the opposite side of this floor. Through this door with the red light and knocked over plant is Moore's bedroom. On the bed, you can find Moore's phone. If you have Technology 3, you can hack it. Across from it is a travel bag with Beryl's file inside. And if you look up a little, a set of car keys is behind the bag. In the same room, you'll also note the mirror in the bathroom that seems to be some sort of smart home device with an overlay of the news, weather, and even horoscope. There's also a phone built into it. We'll come back to this later. With the car keys in hand, you can head back to the parking garage. Before doing so, I would suggest investigating the kitchen first. Looking at the garbage chute to the left of the police officers reveals blood smeared inside, and this will be important for later. Speaking with the cop in the garage reveals that the remaining sedan is one of Moore's cars. Use the keys to open the trunk and find the report on Hilda. You might notice that there's another locked car in this garage, but before you go much further, you're gonna wanna talk to Wyatt, the parking attendant. You can find him in the security office of the parking garage. Speaking with him reveals that he is a vampire of low standing and with some secrets of his own to hide. Learn what you can about what happened that night from him, but to get him to open the garbage disposal, you'll need to win a confrontation. Without the stats to muscle through it, you'll need the following responses to win. First, tell him you found blood in the garbage chute. Second, ask him why he's being so difficult. And lastly, tell Wyatt that you don't have to answer him. Once won, you can head back to the garbage disposal and open all the dumpsters here. Be sure to investigate thoroughly here. You'll find the missing head of the dead body in the dumpster to the left. But more importantly, be sure to go through the dumpster to the right across from the door. This is where Wyatt's secret stash is, including a vial of Quinton King's Vitae. This can be consumed to temporarily increase your domination stat during this scene. You should have also found the keys to Wyatt's car in his office. These open the trunk of the red car in staff parking, and inside you can find a thin blood artifact. Now before you can go any further, I would suggest feeding first. You'll want your hunger low before you talk to the ghoul, Donna Lehane. You'll find Donna in this reading room to the left, right before Moore's office. In order to get the documents about Jara from her, you'll need to use your Dominate ability. If you can use your Dominate successfully in each of these instances, not only will you obtain the file, but you might be able to convince Donna to leave the crime scene. This will come into play later. Alright, now for the main event. 
If you investigate the dining room, you can find a day planner from Mrs. Moore on the table next to the police officer. In here is a note saying, in case of emergency, call Pura Vida. This is the key to opening Moore's panic room, hidden in the Moore's bedroom. Using the alphabetical keypad on the mirror, just like in the good old days of texting, you can input the numerical equivalent of Pura Vida, or 78728432. Hit call and the panic room opens. This is a point of no return, so if you haven't gotten all the Primogen files yet, do that first. If you have any hunger at all, be sure to feed before entering. You need a hunger level of zero to escape the apartment via this route. Inside, you find a wounded Jason Moore. In order to successfully leave the apartment with him, you'll need to avoid killing any officers you encounter on the way out. If your hunger is zero and you found the vial of Quinton King's blood, you should be able to dominate your way out of this apartment. What happens in this garage depends on how your conversation with Donna Lahane went. If you succeeded in making her leave, you'll get the choice to let Moore go or bring him to the prince. If you didn't get Dana to leave, she'll confront you in the garage and give you the choice to refuse or hand Moore over. If you want Moore to live, you need to hand him over here, otherwise Lahane will shoot Moore down. For more guides and walkthroughs on Vampire the Masquerade Swansong, be sure to check out thegamer.com.